friends, today we're going to be talking about pointillism. Now, the most famous artist who created pointillism, his name was Georges Seurat, and he was a French neo-impressionist painter in the late 18th century. He was born in 1859 and he died in 1891, but he believed that an artist could create mood, harmony, and emotion in art by using colors and lines. Now, he painted using small distinct dots of colors directly on the canvas without mixing the paint. So when you stand far away, the dots seem to blend together into the desired color. But when you look close, you only see the dots. It's a really fun effect there. So this style of painting is called pointillism. So when you look closely, you can see all the tiny dots, but when you step back and look far away, you see the entire picture. Now, we're actually going to be creating an artwork based on, in George Seurat's pointillism style, but we're going to be creating it in the style of the, or in using the subject matter of an artist named Vincent Van Gogh. So Van Gogh actually met Seurat in, I believe it was 1887, before he moved to Arles. So this is one of Van Gogh's painting. This is called 12 Sunflowers. And I thought we could do a nice little close-up of a sunflower today, but in the style of George Seurat. So all you need for this is paper, a pencil, primary colors of paint, that's just red, yellow, and blue, and lots of paper towels, lots and lots of paper towels. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is we're going to draw part of the sunflower. You don't wanna draw the whole sunflower, so we're just gonna draw part of a sunflower. Actually, it's your painting. If you wanna draw the whole sunflower, go for it. So I'm going to do just a quarter of a circle on here, and on this one, I think I'm gonna do a half a circle. Boop. Then to make, so I'm making a couple options, you just make one option. Here, I'm going to make a dot out here and I'm going to kind of wave into the flower, wave into the flower. Then I'm going to do the same thing to come over here. So I want it to be about the same distance away. So it's about that far. So actually that would go right off the edge and I'm just gonna kind of wave all the way off the edge. Same thing over here. I know that's that far. That would be that far. So I'm actually just gonna wave right to the edge. Then in between, I'm gonna go ahead and somewhere in between, I'm gonna put a little dot make a line that goes to there and a line that comes down here and waving to here actually that's not very much of a wave but that's all right and it's going to go right off the edge now on this one same thing i'm going to go ahead and make a dot here and if you wanted to make these pristine you could make these pristine i like sunflowers because they're not usually very pristine i'm going to leave a little space wiggle off the edge wiggle off the edge so this one would be about here wiggle to there wiggle to there so i'm just kind of filling in between and then i'm going to go ahead and fill in between here too cool thing about sunflowers is they are so free and fun you can't really mess up now when we think of sunflowers the main color we think of is yellow right maybe some orange too so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the yellow and I'm going to go ahead and let me switch this around here. So maybe I'll just work on this guy here. I'm going to use just the tip of my finger. I'm going to tap the yellow paint and I'm just going to tap to make the dots. So little dots of yellow, they might overlap a little bit and that's great. So I'm going to make my yellow petals all the way filling in with dots of yellow. Now I wanna do all of my petals with dots of yellow. So I'm not smearing, I'm not dragging, I am tapping with little dots. Now when George Seurat did his, most of his, paint, his dots did not touch I want ours to be touching or maybe overlapping a little bit. And I am going much faster than you guys need to be going. You guys can take your time. Tap, tap, tap. Now I think I'm going to want my petals in the back to be more orangey. 
So what I'm going to do, and I want to do it before it dries, is I'm going to take my finger. Notice how I only got the front of my finger messy. The back of my finger isn't messy at all. I'm going to just tap in the red a little bit, and then I'm going to start tapping in. I only needed a little bit of red, and I'm just going to keep tapping in to make that more of an orange sunflower. Now we are color mixing ours a little bit as we're doing this. And I think I'm even gonna put just a little line of orange right up the middle of these petals as well. So I'm taking the red from here and I'm making a little line of orange at the bottom. A little line of orange up the middle and then adding a little bit more orange to the bottom as well. And I could do that here too. So I'm gonna do that right on the edge. Now I'm using washable paint, so it does not matter if I go off the edge, I can wipe off the counter later. And I'm gonna go ahead and go out just a little bit here. Going back into my yellow. Now you wanna be careful not to mix up your colors too much in your palette. Mixing on your paper is fine, but you don't wanna mix in your palette too much. So I'm tapping to fill in there. I'm gonna to tap to fill in here. I do think it's neat that um, Vincent Van Gogh and George Seurat actually got to meet each other. And Vincent Van Gogh actually probably got to see, um, you know, George Seurat's most famous painting while it was in progress. So this is called a Sunday Afternoon at La Grand Jacques, I believe is how you say it. I'm not good at speaking other languages. And guess what? They both spoke French, among other th languages. Because they both lived in France for a while. So I'm gonna go ahead and tap here. It's really neat because you can tell that Vincent Van Gogh's work was uh, slightly influenced by George Seurat when he went to Arles. His work became kind of lighter and you could definitely see his brush strokes. A lot of his earlier artworks were kind of dark and sad. If you wanna look up a painting called The Potato Eaters, it was really dark and sad. But then his paintings got very, very vibrant. So I'm gonna add a little bit here. So what I'm doing with the red and the yellow is we're just doing a little bit of color mixing. Um, I have this little color wheel here. When you have the primary colors, you can really mix any color in the color wheel, um, in the color spectrum. So, but you always wanna add the lighter color first and then add the darker color on top. Now, when you look at sunflowers, the center of the sunflower is kind of a brown color. So in order to get brown, you mix all the primary colors together. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with my lightest color here. So I'm gonna add my lightest color all over here. Oh, I just had an idea. We could add some leaves or some backgrounds. So we're gonna do that too. Cool thing about the leaves of sunflowers is they look almost exactly like the petals of sunflowers. So I'm gonna go ahead and tap in on my yellow. And then I'm going to tap in some more red and some blue. Because when we mix red and yellow, we get orange. And this we do want to be pretty dark. So red and yellow, we get orange. And then if we keep tapping, if you mix orange and blue, those are complementary colors on the color wheel. That means they're straight across from each other on the color wheel. I'm gonna go ahead and start adding my blue now. And when you mix, complements colors that are opposites on the color wheel so like blue and orange or purple and yellow or red and green you always get some sort of shade of brown so I'm mixing that in right there now again I want you guys to spend more time working on this and really get your colors the way you want them I'm gonna try to make that dark right there so adding more brown to here I love how those colors are mixing right there. And I'm actually trying to keep that dark circle right here. Again, when you look inside a sunflower, see how there's the lighter brown and then a darker brown in the middle? Hmm, now if I wanted to, oh, and here is what the paper towels are for. Whenever you wanna switch colors or get a fresh color that you don't want to mix, make sure you wipe off your finger really well, really, really well. 
Ta-da. Now maybe I will add a leaf in here. Not a lot, but I'm gonna add like maybe one skinny leaf sticking out here. Maybe two. Yeah, I like odd numbers. Let's go ahead and add one more. Right off the edge. And the two colors to mix green, because we want our leaves to be green, we again have our yellow that we're tapping in. And then I'm going to add just the tiniest bit of blue, really the tiniest bit of blue ever. And I'm going to make sure I spread that all around. So that way I can get a little bit on each one. There's one lovely green leaf. I'm gonna come in here. There's our second lovely green leaf. And I really am just tapping my finger up and down to get those that dot technique. Then I think we need a background. What do you think? I like Van Gogh's background. Van Gogh's background in his painting. It's kind of a nice light blue color. I didn't add any white or black to our palette today, so I think I'm just going to go with straight blue for our background. So I'm going to go ahead and touch the blue, and I'm just going to tap in so we've got a nice, lovely blue background. Now, if you don't like touching paint, by all means, try using something like a Q-tip or even the eraser of a pencil for this project because I know some people don't like touching paint and that's all right. I like touching paint. Chalk is a little harder for me. But I do love how this is going to turn out. So I'm just going to fill in my background with blue dots. Any place that is left right to the edge. Now hopefully you guys will be using a little thicker paper. Mine is picking up when I do when I do my tapping. Oh, you could do this on a canvas with acrylic if you'd like, but I definitely recommend something that's washable, at least while it's wet. That way it's really easy to come off your fingers and your clothes. And just like that, I believe we are done. All right, well, I hope you enjoy this pointillist inspired art project, or pointillism inspired art project, um, inspired by the artist George Seurat and Vincent Van Gogh. And I can't wait to see you guys next time. Have fun.